In today's video, you win some, you lose some. And in this case, with the router and the edge guide and the rabbit joint, he lost. Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. Today is gonna be a little different. I, I wanna keep you in the loop on what's going on. So I told you about setting up the router with a rabbit bit and making, or a straight bit, I should say, three quarter straight bit, running a rabbit along the edge of each one of the bottom of the boards for the barn beams and then dropping the side of uh, those full beams into that slot and it's gonna be easier to put everything together. And that is 100% true. And from a production standpoint, that's a complete fail. So when I did it with the table saw on a small piece to replicate what I was gonna do with the router, it was all fine and it was a quick thing. And I still believe that if I had the room to run 12 foot pieces from front to back with a dado stack and all kinds of feather boards set up, then I would do that technique on the table saw. But with the router and the edge guide even hooked up to dust collection, you can still see some of the remnants on here. I tried to film it and it wasn't a total loss. It was a fail in a sense that from a production standpoint, it's just not possible. I have to do eight of these boards for the bottoms and each one of those boards has to have a rabbit on either side. So eight boards, rabbit on either side, 16 rabbit joints, two passes per joint because you can't cut to the full depth in one shot. You'll put too much stress on the router, too much stress on the bit, burn out the bit, burn out the router, even if you're working with a softer wood such as pine. But just after making that first half pass, the dust was so bad it completely covered the camera, the microphone, the, the lens, myself, my goggles, everything was completely covered in sawdust. I couldn't even see what I was doing and I'm in a small shop, and if I'm not sure if any of you have experienced this, but with handheld routers, when you're cutting that much material at a time, even if it's only a half an inch deep with a three quarter inch straight bit, there is sawdust flying everywhere, and with a, va a vacuum going for dust collection, it's creating static and electromagnetism, and it's just sticking to everything. So basically, I had to scrap the idea of doing this, and I said to myself, um, I'm not gonna lose the material. What I'm gonna do is, since I had done one of the joints, I'm just gonna bite the bullet, do the other side like that, and I will continue to use just that one. And then instead of doing the same thing on the opposite side for uh, running it around the, the lolly column, what I, I was gonna do is uh, go back to the miter fold technique. And then it hit me. I did the miter fold technique for the mantle with my old DeWalt track saw. The accuracy on that DeWalt track saw with the DeWalt track was not there. It did not run true to the plane of the, the same plane of the, of the tracks. So if you were cutting at a 90 degree a straight line rip with the track for the DeWalt, then you were cutting on the same plane as that zero guide on the track. When you tilted the DeWalt saw to 45, you were on a completely different plane. So every time um, I did that technique, and mitered uh, and did a long bevel or miter fold technique with the track saw, the old one, the DeWalt, I would have to make the cut, move the track over, and see if I was hitting the line where I needed to be on my mark to get the exact measurement that I need. So the accuracy wasn't there. So I said, let me try on a piece of scrap to see if the Makita saw, which is a totally better saw, and the Festool track, which is the better tracks, let me see if I'm in the same plane when I tilt the saw to 45 degrees. So I did that and I wound up doing the other side of the beam with the miter fold technique. So I'm gonna bring it to the other side of the shop. I'm gonna show you how the rabbit joints worked out, which they worked out great. Just from a production standpoint, it's just not possible for me to continue doing it like this. So I continued on for the, to the rest of that beam with the miter fold and it's not glued up right now, it's just sitting in clamps and I wanna show you how crisp and clean those edges have become. The first thing I'm doing here is showing you a zoomed in shot of the bottom of the beam. Now, this came out perfect. The joint is really tight, it's really clean, it's a perfect 90, which you can really expect to get from a straight bit on a router with an edge guide. So it, that worked out great, but it just took so long and there was so much dust that it's not possible to continue with that. So now I needed this to be seven inches across. And um, I believe I went eight and a quarter across this way. 
do the lolly column. Oh, nine and, nine and a quarter. Right, so, okay, so I got nine and a quarter by, this, this board was already cut to seven. So I ran the saw on its 45 axis, put my track right up against the edge of the board, which was already cut to seven inches, and I made that long miter fold cut. And you can see here, just clamping it in place, there's no glue on this whatsoever. I'm gonna walk you down this line. And this thing is absolutely pristine. So we're going back to this technique. What's really gonna be difficult about this is just the, the sheer length of each one of these boards. So every time I make one of these beams and I cut all the pieces, I'm gonna to have to stack them together, put them in the other side of the shop, come back, cut the next one, put it in the other side of the shop until my workbench is completely clear and I can bring in one section of beams at a time so that I can lay them all out and glue them up and tape the seams, roll them over, and then pin them together with some uh, either 15 or 18 gauge brad nails. I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna use yet. Um, so let me take the camera off the tripod and I'm just gonna run you down real quick along the seam here so you can see how clean this came out. All right, so I'm gonna just show you the bottom here. So this is where I made the rabbit joint here. Now it's not glued up and everything, but it, it was a good joint, nice and clean. And you could see how tight that is. Look how perfect that is, the 3 16 piece. But if you look at the miters, I mean, these miter folds, the way these came out, there's no glue in these whatsoever. I haven't worked over the edges or anything. I don't even have any clamps in this section over here. I just have them on the ends. And it just, they're perfect. So this is the technique that I'm gonna be going back to, which unfortunately will be a little bit more difficult to, um, to perform this task of gluing it up, but uh, the end result is it's, it's gonna work a lot better and it's gonna be much more productive. So you can see I have the saw set to 45 and that just rides on the track like that. So the main reason for me making this video is to let you know that this setup here, a plunge router, straight bit, and edge guide, that's great for just doing dados if you're making a bookcase and you need to put shelves in. If you're putting the rabbit uh, joint on the back of a bookcase or a cabinet so that you can install the back. For something like this, a production standpoint here, it's just not worth it. So I don't want you to think that I'm misleading you and it's the technique that I'm going to use because I'm going to start putting these beams together now and I want you to see how I'm going to do it exactly and I'm going to show you using the miter fold technique. And so I'm totally scrapping this idea of the, uh, the rabbit joint, even though it creates a, a really strong joint. If you were to use this technique to make a, a short run on a mantle, maybe six feet, seven feet, then it'll work for you. But uh, the one real piece of advice I have for you is if you're going to do it, take it outside and even if you have the dust collection set up on it, just do it outside because it's gonna be all over the place. I had it all over my shop, it was stuck to everything. I had to use a, a high powered leaf blower just to get it off myself and then blow it out the door of the shop and get it outside because there was no other way for me to clean this up. All right guys, so I uh, hope you got something out of this. I'm gonna show you in the next video um, the way to bevel that saw, the way to set up the tracks to get the exact cut you need, and how to uh, glue up those miter folds with the packing tape and, and all that stuff, the layout and how we're going to attach everything. And then I'm going to try to get some footage of me um, installing them also after I do the finishing. So I hope you guys enjoy the videos. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll see you next time in my shop, which should be sometime in the beginning of next week. All right, guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.